Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And if you've been paying attention... <clears throat> folks, if you, uh, you've been paying, it's, been, it's been kind of a weird couple of weeks because the news just keeps chewing its own cud. I mean, it's not, they're not interesting. They're interesting, but the same stories over and over again. For instance, every night for, like, the last week, right, I've been talking about New York Congressman George Santos, seen here... <laughs> seen here showing off your grandpa's watch. <laughs> but I'm not going to talk about George Santos tonight. Tonight, I'm going to talk about Anthony DeVolder. <laughs> that guy should not be in Congress. And don't take my word for it, just ask his former roommate, Gregory Maury Parker. Can you imagine being roommates with George Santos? Uh, sorry, Gregory, I don't have my share of the rent yet. I needed to use that money to pay for my mom's third funeral. It, uh... <laughs> it just won't take. <laughs> According to his former roomie, Santos had some problems with the truth. He lied about his family having a home on, you know, on Nantucket and the Cape. His mother was um, a housekeeper in, in Manhattan, and it just didn't seem feasible for him supposedly to, to come from all this uh, generational wealth. Okay, that makes sense, but what if the money came from his dad, the famous man from Nantucket? <laughs> whose, you know, was so long he could, you know. People pay a lot of money to see that. <laughs> Maury Parker has always been suspicious of Santos, but started to doubt himself when Santos won his recent election. But then I thought, well, maybe I was wrong, you know, after the election. Um, because I'm sure the DCCC, you know, and the RNC would have, you know, investigated him, and at least his opponent would have done some op research. That's a good point. <laughs> All of this info was online. Did the DCCC lose Wi-Fi for an entire year? And have to go analog? Huh, nothing about George Santos in the Britannica. <laughs> Let's check the farmer's almanac. <laughs> now, to be clear, Maury Parker never had any problems with George Santos because he never knew anybody named George Santos. I've always known him as Anthony DeVolder. I've yeah. never known him as George Santos. I also knew him as uh, Anthony Zabrowski. Yes, he knew him as DeVolder or Zabrowski, but this trickster is known by many names. The Norse call him Loki. In West Africa, he is Anansi, the spider. To the Navajo, he is Coyote. And the ancient Mayans called him that lying asshat. One of his Catholic... What? Oh. You speak Mayan. I didn't know that. That's funny. One of this Catholic politician's most famous lies so far is that he claimed he was Jewish. Or, as he tried to explain... I'm Jew-ish. Well... <laughs> now, his roommate tells us one of the reasons he claimed to be Jew-ish, it was to aid his sham charity. He had a uh, pet charity, Friends of Pets United. Uh, it was supposedly to um, help out with, you know, sick animals and things like that. He used Zabrowski for his uh, Friends of Pets United, his, um, uh, his GoFundMe. And he would say, oh, well, you know, the, the Jews will give more if you're a Jew. So, not only is he a liar, he's anti-Semitish. So what is this charity? Santos raised money for something called the Friends of Pets United, but no surprise, the IRS has no records of a charity with that name. Okay, but have they checked for Friends of Pets to Volder? <laughs> the particulars of what Santos did with this fake charity are pretty bad, but don't worry, they get worse. Buckle up, because allegedly one of Santos's victims was a disabled veteran who was taking care of his beloved service dog, and they were living in a tent on the side of a highway. The dog needed surgery, but it was going to be expensive, so the veteran got in touch with Santos' charity. Santos set up a GoFundMe for the dog's surgery, but when it reached $3,000, he closed it and became increasingly difficult to contact, even though the vet kept calling Santos on the number Santos gave him, 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Well, there it goes. Thank you. I trained for a while. I trained for a while. And yet, somehow, this gets worse. 
because when the veteran finally got a hold of Santos to schedule his dog surgery, Santos refused to give him any of the donations, saying he would take the money and use it for other dogs. <laughs> yes, other dogs like Max and Skipper and Rover DeVolder. <laughs> when he heard this, sure. 800-588. When he heard this, even Kevin McCarthy said, that's it, George Santos has got to go sit on two House committees, <laughs> small business and science. Well, those two make sense. I mean, Santos said he has a degree from the Bill Nye School at the Shark Tank Academy of Business Science. <laughs> he even played for their volleyball team, the Fighting Barbara Cochran's. <laughs> Santos is not the only cuckoo dum dum who snagged a committee seat because Marjorie Taylor Greene will be seated on the <laughs> Homeland Security Committee, where she'll finally be able to investigate the Gazpacho police, <laughs> as well as the Campbell's Chunky Style Border Patrol. <laughs> And now, for a more fun, lighthearted topic, House Republicans are preparing an emergency plan for breaching the debt limit. Okay, breaching the debt ceiling is a complicated topic, and I don't want to get too technical, so all you need to know is... Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Okay. Here's the thing. The United States, we borrow a lot of money from a lot of people. And the United States has to pay its bills, not just because it's in the Constitution, but because we are in deep with some serious people. That's why the old poster goes, I want you to pay our bills or they're going to take my thumbs, Charlie. <laughs> so what does the GOP... What does the GOP want in return for not shooting the world economy in the head? Well, reportedly, some Republicans plan to ask for spending reductions to entitlement programs such as Medicare and Social Security. Really? Yeah, that's what I said. They want to cut two of the most popular government programs in history? Well, I guess that'll free up money for their new initiative, Drowning Kittens and Slapping Your Mom. <laughs> last Friday... Last Friday... Last Friday? Last Friday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen wrote to House Speaker Kevin McCarthy warning that the U.S. will reach the debt limit on Thursday, January 19th, 2023. Well, 2023, that's got to be years in the future. <laughs> when is that, Apple Watch? <laughs> ah! <laughs> if... oh, thank you. if, in fact, we reach the debt limit tomorrow, which is... Like in 10 minutes at this point, <laughs> Treasury Secretary Yellen says they'll shuffle some money and do some economy stuff, and we won't actually default until early June. So, metaphorically, tomorrow the GP GOP will merely tie the U.S. economy to the tracks in the path of a very slow moving train. Luckily, that's Joe Biden's favorite vehicle <laughs> and his only speed. Okay, El elsewhere, elsewhere in the center. I got all the time in the world. Don't worry about me, man. There's controversy in America's frozen food aisle, Alaska. Last September, Alaska was hit with a major typhoon which caused flooding and wind damage. FEMA came in to help, like they do. Just one problem. There's a large native population that speaks their indigenous languages in Alaska, and FEMA's translations of this important information was just a hair completely wrong. For instance, when Native people tried to get paperwork on disaster relief aid, the instructions had phrases like, your husband is a polar bear, Skinny. <laughs> that is either confusing nonsense words or Gen Z slang I haven't caught up with yet. <laughs> your husband is a polar bear, Skinny. No cap fam, big sleigh. Boots down the house, mama drip. <laughs> oh, no. No. Boots the house down? Boots down the house? Huh? There you go. Obviously, people need accurate information in an emergency. You don't want to be trapped in a raging inferno and be told to stop, drop, and chubby narwhal. <laughs> Turns out these weird and insulting translations were done for FEMA by an outside company, and I'm being told we have an image of the company's CEO. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Trevor Noah and Stephanie Shu. Stick around. <laughs> 